Salve a tutti amici di Comics Reporter e Fumetto Mania, il nostro ospite è veramente emozionante. Oggi abbiamo con noi un'eminenza del mondo del comics, è con noi Mr. Marv Wolfman, famosissimo per la sua miniserie Crisis, co-creatore di Nova, co-creatore dei Teen Titans e moltissimi, moltissimi volumi che hanno fatto veramente la storia del fumetto. Welcome Mr. Wolfman. Ah, thank you. I'm pleased to be here and thank you for inviting me. Okay. Allora, cominciamo subito con la prima domanda. Nel 1985 sei stato all'artefice, insieme a George Perez, di Crisis on Infinite Earths. Questa miniserie ehm, non solo ha riplasmato l'universo DC, ma è sicuramente una pietra miliare del fumetto. Quanto eravate consci all'epoca che questa storia sarebbe stata così rilevante? When when I presented the idea to DC, it was solely to help the DC universe and to get people who were not reading DC comics, the people who were Marvel fans, to come over and to read it. I never thought that the crisis by itself would be the book that they remembered. I thought it was going to be the brand new DC universe that came at the end of it. And we were like a roadmap to the uh, to where we were going, I didn't realize, and I never even considered that the crisis itself would be the milestone. Recentemente tu e George Perez uh, avete partecipato ad un episodio di Teen Titans Go, il cartoons in onda, e doppiando voi stessi. Come è stata questa esperienza e quanto vi siete divertiti? It was incredible fun. Here we are, George and May. Um, however, to tell you, we actually did two episodes. The second one will be airing either later this month or next month, but we did them at the same time. Uh, so uh, they didn't have to come back. It was a lot of fun. Um, it's not something I'm used to. I don't know how often comic book uh, writers and artists get asked to play themselves on a cartoon show, but It, it was a real kick. Uh, the nice thing was, because my memory isn't always great, is that I was reading from a script. No, I didn't write the script. So I was reading somebody else's words that were coming out of my mouth that I had to say. It was very, very funny, very confusing. And I really loved it in the long run. I really liked Teen Titans Go, so. Nova, eh, che è un personaggio che tu hai creato, e i Teen Titans, Go, che, e i Teen Titans che hai rilanciato, sono dei teenagers, così come anche Tim Drake. Credi che utilizzare i teenagers sia un buon espediente per creare un'empatia un, un immediata con il tuo lettore? Non lo so. It was a great, when you're a teenager, you're allowed to make mistakes. You're allowed to screw up completely. Uh, if, if a 30 year old did half the stuff that uh, Spider-Man did uh, and all the stupid stuff he did, uh, you, you'd look at this guy strangely, but a teenager is a great character because he's, they're, the, they're the last years where they can be stupid. And that, that's great for writing. Uh, it means they can make mistakes. They can worry about things that an adult shouldn't be worried about. Uh, I, like the, I, like, I like writing that age group. I was also, when I did it, not that far away from then, uh, which I am obviously now, I'm, you know, miles away. But back then I wasn't that far away from being a teenager. So I remembered all that angst and all the problems one has growing up. Nel 2019, insieme al nostro Claudio Castellini, che salutiamo, ciao Claudio, ti aspettiamo ai nostri microfoni, hai realizzato eh, il volume Man and Superman, che racconta le origini di Superman con un approccio più umano. Come nasce questa storia? I was at a convention speaking with Dan DiDio, and he mentioned that they were introducing a new comic in a few months called Superman Confidential, which was supposed to be Superman set in different 
time periods of his life. And I was asked if I would like to do one of those. And of course I said, absolutely yes, because I wanted to do a time period that they didn't think would be crucial, but is actually one of the most important time periods in, in Superman's life. And I wanted to also write in a completely different style than uh, I think anyone was used to from my stuff because of the Teen Titans, a style was developed a Night Force, a Dracula, a Nova, or any of those others. They were very clear styles, but I wanted to do something I had never done before. And I wanted to take it from a very slow humanistic point of view where we see that Superman isn't that far away from us. Yes, he has superpowers. He has great powers. He has great abilities. But in his head, he's still a young kid. He's only 19. He was raised in Smallville. He was raised in, in the US and Canada, uh, in, in, in Kansas. And that, he knows that. That's his life. He has no memory of Krypton whatsoever. He came over as an infant. He was in hibernation the entire time. So he doesn't know about Krypton. And all he knows is what he was taught by Monta Kent. And I want to write, as I say, a very humanistic story, slow down the pacing, not make it this, uh, you know, that he's going to be fighting everybody. And I, the idea was no fights whatsoever. Um, and I had a great time writing it. And it got the best reviews I've ever gotten. So that's really good. Claudio did a great job on the artwork. It was just wonderful. Siamo davvero emozionati nel sentire le tue risposte. Filippo said that he is uh, very excited in uh, hearing your answer. And uh, myself sp spoke with Claudio uh, three years ago, and he told me that he was very happy to have drawn this story because it was very human and the lack of uh, fighting uh, was the the point the strength of this story because Superman was shown as a, a human for the first time. <laughs> See, to me, he always was, and people never focused on that. They wanted to make him the alien. And I'm thinking, he grew up in Kansas. He, he, he was maybe three months old when he landed in Kansas. You know, he has no memory of another country. He's not a, he's, he's a 22 year old uh, who's, uh, who's now on his own, like all 22 year olds who go off after college. And now he has to get a job. He has to get an apartment. He has to do all these things he's never done before. And that has nothing to do with people he's going to fight. It's all, here's his life. Here's what he has to do because everyone his age has to do that. How does he handle it? How does he handle buying an apartment, uh, renting an apartment? How does he get a job? Why in the world would he think that he could get a job, this kid from Smallville who maybe wrote for the school newspaper, how can he get a job at the best newspaper in the entire country? So all these things, you took it from the point of view of putting him in again against the world that everyone has to face and we just watch what he does and slowly comes together over a period of time. Mr. Wolfman, lei ha lavorato con i più grandi artisti, tra questi ricordiamo Gene Colan, con cui ha realizzato Tomb of Dracula. Faccio vedere al pubblico una tavola di quel, di quel, di quel periodo, di, quei, di quella serie. Puoi parlarci di quei tempi e del tuo rapporto con questo artista, Mo scomparso purtroppo, ma mai dimenticato. Gene, uh, you know, in the early 1960s, when he started to work for Marvel, uh, Stan Lee nicknamed him Gentleman Gene Colan. And he was. He was really one of the sweetest, nicest guys you could possibly ever imagine working with. I don't think he understood how talented he was uh, because he was brilliant. Uh, I visited him many times. We talk about the stories every month because we go over, he'd get the story plot and uh, the two of us would talk over the phone for however long he had questions about before he started drawing. Um, really wonderful guy. His artwork is tremendous and stays that way. If I was able to aim you a little bit, let's see if I can. There is a picture that Gene did for me for my birthday 
uh, many years ago. And it's right by my side of my desk. So that should say immediately how much, uh, how much I really love his work. Uh, George's is over there. So he's, he's also on the wall. Um, Jean was incredible to work with, a great storyteller, a great uh, picture. He, he was able to draw real people. And because of that, when I'd have to, when I'd come in afterwards, or even in the plotting of it, I got to write stories that I knew would be up his alley. I, they, what happened was I learned to write characters because he was drawing real people. I learned to write real people. Fabio, dopo, questa, dopo aver visto questa meraviglia, veramente <ride> siamo rimasti di stucco. Fabio, a te la parola. Continuiamo con le domande per Mr. Wolfman, per favore. Okay. Oltre al mondo dei fumetti, lei ha lavorato moltissimo con cinema, televisione e anche con i videogames. Quale ambiente ha trovato più eh, stimolante e quale ha rappresentato una sfida maggiore? Um, first of all, I love writing in different, uh, for different formats because what that does, it, it makes you think about what you're doing. It's very simple to keep doing the same type of writing all the time. If all I did was comics and I, comics were my favorite thing to write, but if all I did was comics, it would be rote. It would be, it would be the same thing month after month after month by doing a novel, by doing a video game, by doing any of the uh, animation, it keeps you interested. It keep, keeps challenging you to find ways to write. It's a little bit different because you have to fit different formats. Um, the hardest one to write, and therefore a lot of fun to do would be video games because you're dealing with such a large canvas. You're dealing with hundreds of people who are going to be putting the game together, uh, creating the story, uh, figuring the technical as well as the creative. So, but I love writing them all. My favorite, as I say, is comics. Quanto ti è emozionato veder trasposto appunto Crisis in TV nell'Arrowverse e quanto partecipare con il tuo cameo nell'episodio finale? Racconta, per favore. If you asked me two years earlier, what's the one thing that I did that will never, ever, ever be done in TV and movies, I would have said crisis. It had hundreds of characters, it had endless worlds, it had all these different things. I didn't think, I was positive TV couldn't afford to do that. I didn't even uh, think that movies could have done that. So when um, Mark Guggenheim and uh, Greg Balenci's company told me they were doing it, and they told me a long time before uh, it was announced, I was just like shocked. It, What are they going to do? You know, they can't possibly do it. And they did. And it was pretty amazing. I mean, they had to adapt it to television, but they did that with obviously lo obvious love for the material. I've, I spoke to them an awful lot and they really loved it. They loved Crisis. It's what, part of what got them into comics and into writing in many way, different ways. Um, I read an interview with Greg Belanti uh, that took place just maybe at the beginning of Arrow. So you know how long ago that was in which he said, all of his friends were huge fans of Watchmen and Dark Knight, but he loved the, uh, the Wolfman Perez, Teen Titans and Crisis on Infinite Earth. This is long before they even dreamed of doing it. Uh, and he's saying that was his favorite stuff. So. I was very confident they do a good job. And as they sent me the scripts, I, I could see that it was perfect. It, it was a really good representation of what George and I did. In uh, History of the DC Universe è presente una domanda ricorrente. Che cos'è un eroe? Come si racconta un eroe e che cos'è un eroe al giorno d'oggi, nei nostri tempi? I th you know, obviously there's a lot of different opinions. Uh, some people like the very dark stuff because it's very realistic. Some people like the very light stuff. I go back and forth. I like what works best for a story. To me, a hero is someone who does what's right 
without thinking about it. Uh, it's so ingrained in them, they don't think it's something special to do something right. They don't think that they're gonna be, you know, doing something nobody's ever done before. All they care about is doing it correctly, making it work, helping people, and no irony. And the problem with a lot of characters today, a lot of readers today, I think, is they want something ironic. So when Superman does something, uh, they want you, they want him almost to be giving you a wink while he did it. I believe that Superman, if he, if a character like him existed and was brought up by those particular parents, uh, Jonathan Martha Kent, he, he would do it because it was right. That's the only reason he did it, not because he thought about it, he just did it. And that to me is what makes a hero is somebody who is gonna do the right thing because it's the right thing and is not looking for something down the line. He's not looking for some for people to applaud him. He just does it because everyone should help out. Everyone should do the right thing. Allora, Mr. Wolfman, per favore, ci può raccontare quali sono i suoi progetti presenti e futuri, ovviamente nell'ambito lavorativo, se non sono confidenziali? They are. <laughs> uh, I could say that I'm, I'm working on several video games. In fact, I have a Zoom meeting immediately after this with, uh, with some of the uh, people that I'm working with on, on uh, different uh, video game projects. Um, DC also re uh, just asked me if I'd be willing to work on a, on a, a project uh, that sounds really interesting and we're just waiting to talk about it. We, uh, we haven't had a chance Uh, they just wanted to find out if I was interested. Um, none of which I can really talk about. And there is one other thing I can't talk about that's really exciting if it happens or when it happens. I think it's going to. Sorry. Una domanda che è un po' un classico che poniamo ai nostri ospiti è qual è il tuo rapporto con l'Italia? Uh, I've only been to Italy once. Uh, Venice um, and really would love to come back because uh, I had no idea what, what was going I had no idea what I'd see and I just totally fell in love with it uh, and really want to see some of the other areas of uh, Italy um, it was great it was great to go there for the one time but I was only there for a couple of days Parteciperai a qualche comic convention uh, nei prossimi mesi negli Stati Uniti? I've uh, turned down all convention um, requests until next year. Uh, in 20, 2022, I'll go back to doing conventions, assuming that um, these variant strains that are just starting to appear uh, aren't still uh, causing problems. I've, both my wife and I have been vaccinated. We were vaccinated from as, as fast as we were able to be. Uh, so I'm not totally worried about that, but I do think it's, it's a problem. And I don't want to go traveling, primarily, you know, taking a plane ride for 12 hours um, uh, for a convention. I'm hoping that next year it will be safe and I can re return to doing conventions because I really enjoy them. I've been there. I've been to most conventions since the very first one. And um, I started at San Diego with the third one, but I had been in New York. So I went to, I had seen, gone to the other New York conventions. So I would love to continue doing it, but this pandemic is pretty bad and it's not yet gone. Aspetteremo presto anche l'anno prossimo, insomma, di poterti incontrare. Say if a convention in Italy wants to bring my wife and me i would be more than happy to come. <laughs> Mr. Wolfman, da parte di Comics Reporter Fumetto Mania, noi la ringraziamo per averci dato questo onore di poterla intervistare. Veramente siamo emozionati perché abbiamo di fronte, ripeto, un'eminenza del mondo del fumetto. Penso che l'aggettivo sia assolutamente appropriato. Da parte di Comics Reporter Fumetto Mania, per oggi è tutto. Grazie e alla prossima. Ciao.
Okay, Mr. Wolfman, we thank you for attending with us in uh, this brief interview. And uh, we are very <laughs> excited in uh, talking with you because uh, you are a legend to us and uh, in our country, your work is really loved. So we thank you again for being with us. Thank you for having me. And uh, we'll try to work to invite you in uh, a convention in Italy, you and your wife, obviously. <laughs> That would, be, that would be wonderful because we've been talking about wanting to go back there uh, for a while and then, this, then the pandemic hit and that, that screwed it up completely. Uh, so yeah, if it happens, that, that would be great. Thank you. That, that will be great because the pandemic has uh, canceled the several convention also here in Italy. Okay, thank you again. And, uh, and thank you. I, thank you. I, thank I, you for your time and eh, for, for the opportunity. For your... For your time and for your work, we, we love your work, we love Crisis on Infinite Earths, Teen Titans, uh, has been a very milestone in our life. <laughs> well, thank okay. you so much. Really, really. Bye. Take care. Thank Ciao. you. Grazie, grazie.